Lockdown is talking about trillions of dollars being just wiped out for no reason and and all that. Why do you say just just take us through what what your theory is here? Well, what happened in the middle of March uh, 2020 is that there was an initial publication by Imperial College London modelers, Neil Ferguson's bunch, which projected based on a simulation, not real data, but a simulation, that there would be colossal losses to COVID if we didn't take radical action. And unfortunately, that and also the images that were being sent around the world from China, from, from the streets of Rome, you may, you may remember, people supposedly, you know, keeling over in the middle of the street and having to be carted off to morgues. Those were very scary. These modeling projections were very scary. And even though earlier in March, many countries chief health officers and other leaders were saying that this was not a particularly dangerous virus, that most people would recover, that we'd be fine. That stuff that happened in the middle of March really changed everyone's tunes. The populations around the world started to get extremely frightened and they started to look to their population's leaders so the, the politicians of different different countries and different states and the Commonwealth here in Australia and indeed their whole retinue of backers, including the chief health officers and everyone else, to provide protection against the threat that they perceived. Unfortunately, very few people actually looked at the data, yeah, yeah. which even then showed that this virus potentially uh, is not, not nearly as dangerous to people in the working age uh, age ranges as it is to uh, in potential to people who are older and uh, immunocompromised and have comorbidities and that was very clear early on so back in March 2020 in late March I said on national radio here that we should not be locking down the economy in toto we should be focusing our attention on the protection of the vulnerable people in our see, population see, the people most likely to suffer that is that, that, that I understand because you know when you've been asked like if anybody asks you uh, what is more important? Is the economy is important or is it the, the, the people's lives important? There is no, I mean, nobody's going to say the economy. Everybody's going to say it is the people. Now, that is what we saw because in the age of social media, I mean, we have been having coronavirus outbreaks all throughout the history from, I think, the SARS virus and all those things, but it never had this uh, particular product called social media at that particular time when it broke out. Now, here we have social media. Now, it's been fuel everybody's giving their theories blah 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 and the world is now trying to be grappled with fear now sanity didn't prevail here uh, professor it completely uh, went out of the window now where do you think we made the mistake well i think one of the mistakes was to indeed uh, present that trade-off of lives oh. versus the economy that is a false trade-off what is always the the choice of a politician is do i choose this policy which will in expectation save this many lives or deliver this much human quality of life and length of life or do i choose this other policy which delivers this right and having a healthy economy is part of the policy set you can choose to allow the economy to keep operating and that economy is what generates human livelihood and welfare and longevity Right? And people didn't understand that at the time. And so that false dichotomy of either lives or the economy, when really the economy is something that the policymaker needs to keep alive in order to keep people alive and living healthy lives, that, that was just... Um, it was a very unfortunate period because uh, we lost the ability to think in terms of costs and benefits of so different policies that are always in terms of lives and, and life years.